In today's video, I'm going to cover the top 10 best-selling GameCube games of all time, so let's jump right into it. Before we get into the top 10 best-selling GameCube games list, I want to tell you that today's video is sponsored by The Ridge, and I've been using this awesome wallet for over a week now, and I'm going to tell you all about it right now. Are you still using a fat, bulky wallet uncomfortably sitting in your back pocket? I know I was until I switched to The Ridge wallet, and now I will never go back. Ridge wallet holds up to 12 cards with an optional clip for your cash, and with over 30 colors, RFID blocking technology, quality material and a lifetime warranty, it is no wonder Ridge Wallet features over 40,000 five-star reviews. I've been using my Ridge Wallet for over a week now and I absolutely love it. Slimming my wallet down to just a few cards and having a wallet so small and compact I can slip it into my side pocket is an absolute game changer. I absolutely love the compact, stylish, and durable design and the cash clip is an absolutely awesome addition. From now until December 3rd, my viewers can receive 10% off your order at Ridge.com using coupon code RETRO88, and you can find the link and coupon code in the description down below as well. Thank you to The Ridge for sponsoring this video. The Mario Party series started on the Nintendo 64 in 1998 with the first game in the series and the multiplayer focused board game and minigame style of gameplay became an immediate hit. The first Mario Party sold 2.7 million copies and immediately launched the series into mass popularity thus solidifying it as a regular series for Nintendo. After another two sequels and the end of the Nintendo 64 and the birth of the GameCube, we got four more Mario Party sequels on the GameCube leading me to numbers 10 and 9 in today's video. The 10th best-selling GameCube game is Mario Party 5 with 2,080,000 units worldwide. And the 9th best-selling GameCube game is Mario Party 4 with 2,470,000 units worldwide. Mario Party 4 released in 2002 and Mario Party 5 released in 2003 on the Nintendo GameCube and they are both fantastic additions to the Mario Party franchise. As a matter of fact, the four Mario Party GameCube games are among my favorites in the series and they all four each sold over a million copies. It is no surprise surprised that Mario Parties 4 and 5 are in the top 10 best-selling GameCube games list because the GameCube is a local multiplayer machine and the Mario Party series is not only fantastic for four people, but it also is a game with wide appeal. Now, interestingly enough, sales did go down slightly for Mario Party 6 and 7, but not by much. Maybe GameCube owners were starting to get bored of the series after 5, but this lull did not last long as Mario Party 8 on the Wii sold over 8 million copies. I highly recommend all four GameCube Mario Party games, but fair warning, they are all starting to get pretty expensive like most GameCube games. The Pokemon series first began on the Game Boy with Pokemon Red and Blue and it launched what is now the biggest multimedia franchise in the world as it is currently the highest grossing. Since Red and Blue, there have been a multitude of games in the main series as well as a ton of spin-off games in several different genres. Two such spin-off games are Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2 which both released in 2000 and 2001 respectively on the Nintendo 64. Pokemon Stadium 1 sold over 5 million units and Pokemon Stadium 2 sold over 2 million units making them both very successful games. Essentially, the Pokemon Stadium games allowed you to battle computer and player opponents on the TV with 3D graphics using Pokemon from the red, blue, and yellow games, and there were also a selection of fun mini games to play as well. So this leads me to the number 8 best-selling GameCube game, which is Pokemon Coliseum released in 2004 and sold 2,540,000 units worldwide, which is not surprising considering the popularity of Pokemon Stadium and just Pokemon in general. Just like Pokemon Stadium, Pokemon Coliseum features single player and multiplayer battle modes, but it also features a full single player RPG story mode as well, which clocks in at around 20 to 25 hours. This was really the first time we have seen a full single player Pokemon adventure on home consoles, and it was very well regarded, and I suspected this further boosted the sales. I'm honestly surprised Pokemon Coliseum didn't sell more, and now it is pretty damn expensive and hard to find, just like most first party GameCube games.
The Metroid series started in 1986 with the first Metroid game on the Nintendo Entertainment System and it sold really well at almost 3 million units, thus becoming the birth of a new long-standing first-party Nintendo IP. After that, we had a sequel on the Game Boy, Super Nintendo, and Game Boy Advance, which had all been 2D action-adventure games until the seventh best-selling GameCube game of all time, which is Metroid Prime, released in 2002. Metroid Prime was a huge leap and change for the series as not only was it the first game in the Metroid series to make the jump to 3D, it was also from the first person's perspective while still maintaining the action adventure and exploration gameplay formula of the 2D series. Nintendo took a big chance with this massive change as it could have spelled disaster for the series. But these transitions to 3D have paid off well for Nintendo in the past with Ocarina of Time and Super Mario 64. Well, it paid off for Metroid Prime as well as it sold 2,820,000 units worldwide making it one of the top selling games GameCube games and spawning two more Prime sequels with a fourth currently in development. Metroid Prime was also one of the most visually and technically impressive games to be released on the GameCube and it was full of very unique and original gameplay mechanics. It also maintained that more hardcore difficulty that the Metroid series is known for so it is no surprise that it did well sales wise as many GameCube owners were probably hungry for a more mature and difficult gaming experience from Nintendo. Metroid Prime is in my opinion one of the greatest games ever made. Animal Crossing was a new IP from Nintendo that first released in Japan on the Nintendo 64 in 2001 before being enhanced and ported to the GameCube in North America in 2002. Animal Crossing on the GameCube is the sixth best-selling game with 3,150,000 units worldwide. Animal Crossing had a lot going for it that contributed to its massive success for Nintendo as a new IP. Critical acclaim and high review scores across the board? Check. Cute animals with lots of adorable sound effects and music? Check. A sim game with lots of unique unique gameplay elements and Nintendo themed items and games included? Check. The ability to visit other players' villages and check them out? Check. Animal Crossing Out of the Gates had mass appeal to both children and adults, and it was a game even non-gamers could play and get into. And now fast forward to today and one of the best selling Nintendo Switch games is Animal Crossing New Horizons with over 30 million units worldwide. Animal Crossing on the GameCube literally launched what would become a worldwide phenomenon and a massive success for Nintendo. And the GameCube version is a game that to this day I can pop in and still have a blast with and just relax. Luigi's Mansion was released on the Nintendo GameCube in 2001 as a launch title and it is the fifth best-selling GameCube game of all time at 3,600,000 units worldwide. It was another brand new IP which is always risky for a company but in Nintendo's case it really paid off yet again. Any game in the Mario universe tends to do really well for Nintendo and, and up until this point audiences were really not used to games starring Mario's often overlooked green clothed brother Luigi. Luigi's Mansion was completely different than any Mario game ever released as it was spooky, more slow paced, and exploration and puzzle based, and you were basically a ghostbuster. The mansion was a joy to explore and the atmosphere with the sound effects, music, and lighting effects were all top notch. It was a great showcase for the graphical power of the system as Luigi's Mansion looked fantastic and it was many GameCube owners first game, myself included. It is a game just packed full of charm and unique and original gameplay mechanics and that quirkiness Nintendo is known for. Luigi's Mansion is one of my favorite GameCube games and I am so happy it was a success as we now have gotten two amazing sequels out of the series and I hope to see many more. The Zelda series first went 3D in 1998 on the Nintendo 64 with Zelda Ocarina of Time which was a massive success critically and sold over 7.5 million units worldwide making it the best selling Zelda game until Breath of the Wild was released on the Switch. Zelda Ocarina of Time was a revolutionary game in the gaming industry and changed the face of 3D gaming going forward. Fast forward to 2003 on the GameCube for the release of Zelda The Wind Waker which was the first 3D Zelda game released on the GameCube and 
and it is the fourth best-selling game on the console with 4,600,000 units worldwide. The funny thing is that when The Wind Waker was announced, fans were in an uproar and very upset about the cell shaded graphics, and some fans were upset about the world mainly being an ocean with small islands scattered around. Fans thought that Nintendo was turning Zelda into a kid's game. Well, I guess it didn't matter because The Wind Waker was a massive critical success with extremely high review scores, and it sold very well. Now, The Wind Waker is considered among many Zelda fans to be one of the best in the series, although there are still some Zelda fans that hate it for whatever reason. I personally love The Wind Waker, and I remember even pre-ordering it through Toys R Us back in the day, and I have played and beat the game multiple times. Back on the Nintendo 64 in 1996, Nintendo released a game that would change 3D gaming forever, and that game was Super Mario 64, which was the first foray into 3D platforming for the Mario series, and it was a massive success sales-wise with almost 12 million units worldwide. So Nintendo really had a lot to live up to with the next 3D Mario entry on the GameCube being Super Mario Sunshine released in 2002, and it is the third best-selling GameCube game of all time with 6,310,000 thousand units worldwide. Super Mario Sunshine was quite the departure from Super Mario 64 in most Mario games in general as it took place in a tropical island setting and gave Mario a new tool to use with the flood. It had a lot of enemies and settings never before seen in a Mario game so it was really foreign territory for a lot of Mario fans. It featured the same structure with an overworld hub and several sandbox levels to play in divided into missions where you have to obtain a shine sprite in each mission which is just like the Power Stars in Super Mario 64. The flood and the setting added a ton of new gameplay mechanics to the series, and this was a turnoff for some players that wanted Super Mario Sunshine to be more like Super Mario 64. But the majority of fans were sold, thus launching Super Mario Sunshine into the best-selling list on the GameCube, and it is a game I love playing to this day, although some people still hate it for whatever reason. Mario Kart series first started on the Super Nintendo in 1992 with Super Mario Kart. It instantly became a hit and solidified the series as one of Nintendo's best-selling series. It was something never really seen before as not only was it a fun and over-the-top racing game, but it also starred characters and tracks based on levels from the Mario universe and allowed you to pick up power-ups and weapons as you race, which added a whole new layer of fun. Since the Super Nintendo, we have had a Mario Kart game released on pretty much every single Nintendo console and in 2003, the series hit the GameCube with Mario Kart Double Dash, which is the second best-selling GameCube game of all time with 6,950,000 units worldwide. Mario Kart Double Dash did something never before seen in a Mario Kart game, and sadly, it hasn't been seen since. It featured two racers per cart with one in the front and one in the back, and each racer could hold an item and you could swap between them at will. This awesome mechanic added a new layer of strategy to Mario Kart as it allowed you to store up to two different items and swap out as needed depending on the situation. This combined with fantastic track design, awesome characters, and new power-ups led to a Mario Kart game that was a guaranteed success on the GameCube, and it helps that it received critical praise as well. Mario Kart Double Dash to this day is one of my favorite entries in the series, and I still love to fire it up and race from time to time. <laughs> The Super Smash Bros. series started on the Nintendo 64 in 1999 and sold over 5.5 million copies, so it was an instant success as a new IP. It is not surprising as it was a brilliant idea. Pit characters from the Nintendo universe against each other in a fast-paced 2D fighting game and stages from Nintendo games using items and weapons from Nintendo games combined with music from Nintendo games and a very unique gameplay mechanic that has become the core of the franchise and, well, you have struck gold. For those who are not aware, in Super Smash Bros, instead of trying to bring down your opponent's life bar to win, your goal is simply to knock them off the stage. When you attack them and do damage, a percentage counter increases, and the higher it is, the easier it is to send them flying off the stage. This was a brilliant idea and totally changed the way you play a 2D fighting game. So is it really any surprise that the number one best-selling GameCube game is Super Smash Bros Melee released in 2001 and selling 7,070,000 units worldwide? The answer is no. 
pretty much everyone watching this video knew this game was going to be number one. Super Smash Bros. Melee was bigger and better than Super Smash Bros. in every conceivable way. It had a bigger cast of characters, way more stages, way more items, several new modes, including an adventure mode, far more multiplayer options, a metric shit ton of unlockables, and so, so much more. Super Smash Bros. Melee had more content in it than most games in that entire generation, and it is basically infinitely replayable. Combine that with the appeal and popularity of all the included Nintendo franchises and the fact that Super Smash Bros. Melee developed a huge competitive fighting community and you have a recipe for massive success. Super Smash Bros. Melee is still widely played to this day and still to this day many people consider it to be not only the best Smash Bros. game ever made but one of the best games ever made. It should be in every single GameCube owner's library and I love the game so so very much. Well there you have it folks, the top 10 best selling games of all time on the Nintendo GameCube. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure and hit that like button. Let me know in the comments down below if you own or have played any of the top 10 best selling games on the GameCube. I would bet that most of you probably have, but let me know that in the comments down below. Let me know if any of these are really surprising to you that they were on the top 10 best selling list. For me personally, none of these were really surprising. I mean, it's, you know, pretty standard stuff for a Nintendo console. As always, folks, stay safe out there, keep playing games and having a good time, and I'll catch you all in the next video later. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. You're freaking awesome. And if you enjoyed it, hit that like button, share it with your friends and family. Check out all the social media links in the description down below. And if you want to see more Retro Wolf 88 videos, here's a couple more for you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go play some more video games later.